Okay, this is Lab Workshop 2 uh, on Regression, Part 2. So the last sheet in the worksheet here is, is called Long's Auto. So we want to go and look at Long's Auto. So this is data from a used car dealership. So this is uh, maybe a used car uh, department of a regular dealership and you're the manager and whenever a car is traded in you have to put it out on the lot and you need to have a way to predict what price to put on the windshield of that car. So for a particular model of car you go back and you see uh, past data uh, from the sales of that particular model of car. And you've got the model year, the type of transmission, the mileage, the air conditioning, whether the car had air conditioning or not, and whether it had leather interior or not, and then a sales price. And you've got that for a number of different cars. So for 50 different cars that have been sold in the past. And you think this data might be the first few variables there might be useful in predicting sales price. So we have two numerical variables. We have three categorical variables. So the first thing we'll do is create dummy variables, but I'm going to show you a new way to do that. What we're going to do is copy these columns and paste them over here. And then I'm going to get rid of the categorical variables. And we will use uh, one of Excel's logical functions to create our dummy variables rather than doing it manually. So this will be both faster and more accurate than doing the, our dummy, venue, dummy, dummy variables manually. So the function I'm going to use is an if function. So I'm going to say equals if. And the first thing that Excel wants to see is a logical test. So my logical test is if whatever Excel finds in this cell over here in B3 is equal to automatic. And because this is a word instead of a number, I have to put quotation marks around it. So this is my logical test. If B3 equals automatic, then I have to put a comma. Now Excel is looking for the value if that is true. If that is true, I want to see a 1. So I type 1, comma. And then Excel says value if false. If it's false, I want to see a 0. And close bracket and enter. So my if function went over to B3, it saw automatic, so it gave me a 1. I can copy that function now down to all the rest of my cars, and I can see that every time it went over and saw automatic, it gave me a 1. When it went over and didn't find automatic, it gave me a 0. So just remember, it's not looking for the word manual, to give a zero. It's just if it doesn't see automatic, it will give me a zero. I'll do the same for air conditioning. So equals if my logical test now is column D. So D3, if D3 equals uh, quote yes, comma one value of true, comma zero value of false enter. And because these are all relative references, I can actually copy that function to both the air conditioning and the leather interior columns. Paste. Copy. Paste. And so now I've got my dummy variables. 
The next thing with multiple regression is I should check for multicollinearity. In other words, I should check if any of my independent variables have high correlations with other independent variables. So to do that, I'm going to use the data analysis tool pack, uh, and it has a correlation tool. So I'll choose the correlation tool. And I have to give it my input range. So my input range is all of my independent variables. So those five columns with their labels. It's grouped by columns, and I included labels in the first row. I will give, I will let it go to a new, a new worksheet, and I will call that correlation. Say OK. So this is my correlation analysis from Excel. So I can see along the diagonal, uh, each variable is, is exactly correlated with itself. Uh, but in the others here, I'm looking for high numbers. Uh, most textbooks suggest anything over 80 would be a problem. And we have one very high number here, right? So the correlation between year and mileage, it's a negative correlation. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's almost 92% uh, correlated, so 0.92, very high correlation. So we probably should not be using both year and mileage in our regression analysis. If we do, we won't be able to, the, the coefficients for them can get very muddled. So we don't want to use them both. So we'll go back to our data here. Let's just take a look at um, each of those and their relationship to price. So if I take year, my year data, hold down the control key and select price. And let's see, look at a scatter diagram. So this is price and year. Let's do the same for mileage. So mileage, hold down the control key, price, insert, scatter diagram, this is price and mileage. So we can look at the two of these. We, this looks like a linear relationship with price in, between price and year, but we do have one year here, 1996, that doesn't seem to fit the data. So why might that happen? Uh, quite often with automobiles, we can have a, a year when a particular model has some problems. They might have a major recall and that could affect the resale price of those particular uh, of the that particular year of that model um, price and mileage it looks like we've got this negative relationship which we saw from our correlation we could plot a trend line add a trend line so i'm going to add a linear trend line And there's a sort of a section of data here that doesn't necessarily fit a linear trend line very well. We can ask again to add a trend line and maybe choose one of the different ones. I'm going to choose a power line and close. And that may be a better fit to the data than the linear trend. But we have to pick one of these. If I take the linear trend here, that trend line, it looks like a very good fit except for this data. So a lot of these decisions are very subjective. I'm going to take the, I'm going to use year instead of mileage, and I'm going to discard the data for 1996 because I don't really want the effect of that 
particular year and whatever happened as far as recalls or 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 problems with that particular year I don't want that to affect my my uh, predictions for price of cars I will have to remember that if I get a 1996 model in that I shouldn't be using this model to predict the price I'll have to lower the price a bit when I do that so I'll use year but I'll get rid of the 1996 data so I'm going to again copy I'm going to copy this data my table of data and go to a new sheet and if I paste that here I see I have a problem because the I had formulas or functions I had if functions in all of these spaces I'm going to undo that and I'm going to do what I call a paste special I have paste options if I right click and I can paste just values so that's what I want to do so now these don't have if functions in them anymore they just have values so now I want to take out my 1986 data so I'm going to look at all of my data here and I'm going to sort it so that's in the data tab sort I want to sort by year I say OK so now it's all sorted by year I'm going to take my 1996 data and delete those rows okay. now let's go to our regression tool in the data analysis tool pack my y range is my price that's the dependent variable that's what I'm trying to predict my x range oh, I, sorry I have to cancel this I didn't get rid of mileage cancel I'm not going to use the mileage so I will delete that column okay now we'll get our regression tool back so my y range is price my x is year transmission air conditioning and interior all together I do have to have them in adjacent columns to do this I've included labels I'm going to have an output range I'll have the output start right here and I'll ask for residuals and residual plots so let's look at our we have a residual plot for the leather interior that looks okay residual plot for air conditioning looks okay for transmission looks okay so our dummy variables no problem our year residual plot uh, there's not a lot of data to look at here um, certainly we'd like to collect more data if we could but there isn't any real pattern that I can see there with this little data so we will look at our summary output I'll adjust the columns here Ah, so it's telling me my R squared is 99 so again a probably unrealistic example of a regression model that's very high it says 99 percent of all of the uh, variation in prices can be explained by this model I have 39 observations left my first hypothesis is that that 99.99 might really be zero that's the F test and my significance F is very very small so I can be very confident that that R squared isn't zero and that there is a, a, a statistically significant regression model somewhere in here 
but I also, with multiple regression, have to check each of my independent variables and see if each one is having a significant effect. So I go down to year. So year has a very small p-value, so it is statistically significant. The same with transmission. The same with interior. They're all very small numbers. If I look at air conditioning, it's 0.01. Not quite as small, but if I set my level of significance at uh, 0 0.05 or a 95% confidence level, then this still uh, lets me reject the hypothesis that that coefficient for air conditioning might be zero. So at a 95% confidence level, I can, can say that all of these independent variables are having a statistically significant effect on my model. So the question then says, what would you estimate to be the resale value of a 1999 car with 29,300 miles, manual transmission, leather interior, and air conditioning? So for a 1999 car, I don't care about the mileage because we're not using that but with manual transmission air conditioning and leather interior the model predicts a sales price of so I've just got this car in as a trade-in. It's 1999, manual transmission, air conditioning, and leather interior. So the sale price for the from the model is I have to use my equation here. It's going to be equal to the intercept plus coefficient for year times 1999 plus the coefficient for transmission. This is manual, so that dummy variable was a zero, plus the coefficient for air conditioning times one, plus the coefficient for leather interior, which it has, so that's times one. Enter. So the model tells me that pre the predicted sales price for this car is 15,958. So since this is a used car lot, I would probably take my white marker and go out on the lot and write 15,999 on the windshield because they always seem to have 999s on the prices of used cars. So that's part two of Lab Workshop 2.